Decoding Gestures, Nonverbal Communication in English Debates and Discussions. Hello, language learners. Today we're taking a deeper dive into nonverbal communication, more specifically, the world of gestures. You see, communication isn't just about words. Our bodies speak volumes too. In this video, we will explore the different types of gestures used during debates and discussions and how they can impact the messages we're trying to convey. Before we jump into the types, let's briefly touch upon what gestures are. Gestures are movements or positions, usually of our hands or arms, that express our thoughts, feelings or ideas. They play a critical role in communication, adding depth to our words and sometimes even communicating things that words can't. In debates and discussions, they can make your arguments more convincing and show your confidence and understanding of the subject. Our first type of gesture is the emblem. Emblems are specific gestures that have a direct verbal equivalent. These gestures are often culturally specific and can be understood without any verbal accompaniment. Examples include nodding the head for, yes, shaking it for, no, or thumbs up for, good job, or, I approve. Next up, we have illustrators. These are gestures that accompany our speech and provide a visual representation of what's being said. If you're telling a story about a big fish you caught, you might hold your hands apart to show just how big it was. These gestures enhance the listener's understanding and can add a level of engagement to your communication. Moving on, let's discuss regulators. These are gestures used to control the flow of a conversation. When you want to interject in a debate, you might raise your hand. If you're eager to hear more from someone, you might lean in or use your hand to signal, go on. Regulators are essential for maintaining the rhythm of a discussion and ensuring everyone gets a chance to contribute. Lastly, we have adapters. These are often subconscious gestures that satisfy a physical or emotional need. Examples include scratching an itch, playing with a pen when you're nervous, or crossing your arms when you're uncomfortable. These can provide insight into a speaker's state of mind, but be careful not to rely too heavily on them. They can sometimes be misleading. And that's a wrap on our exploration of gestures in debates and discussions. Remember, nonverbal communication, like gestures, can greatly enrich your spoken words. So, Pay attention to your own and others' gestures to enhance your communication skills. Until next time, keep learning, and keep gesturing.